In this episode of Engineers React, we're going to talk about an 1100 foot tower climb. And I'm here with Aaron Cox, who's a radio engineer and the guy who got this tower footage. And yes, this is the same combiner hall where 10 radio stations send their signals down these pipes, up and out to the antenna, 250,000 watts. So Aaron, tell us what's going on here, and this is your drone, correct? This is my drone, and this is what we call, uh, it's got a lot of names, right? The McKinsey mm -hmm. Road is the location, but this yeah. is the St. Louis Super Tower, Community Tower. Yeah. Um, this is where you have 10 full class C, C0, C1 stations yeah. combining into one massive antenna system, um, because this was put together back when I think the realization was, well, we'd all love to have our own towers, but there's just not enough right. land. So what was right. it, the 80s? They, they got together, uh, a, yeah. a bunch of stations got together and said, let's build one tower and one massive antenna system. And these are two climbers, certified tower climbers from ERI, Electronics Research Incorporated, over in Chandler, mm -hmm. Indiana. They're doing yeah. an inspection um, well. in late fall. Yeah. They, uh, then you talk about the towers, the reason to combine antenna. There were a lot of people that evidently didn't like antennas in their neighborhood. So once the growth happened in the suburbs, you all of a sudden you were pushed out so far that the signaling wasn't good. And this particular tower, since I was there at the, when it was built, right? The, uh, this particular tower was built at the time in the center of the Arbitron population count. So you, you had a great location. It was an FM only as opposed to FMs hanging on the side of AM. So, so anyway, so now we have this antenna installed up top, and these guys, that, that uh, thing is obviously not on. <laughs> it is not on. Matter of fact, it is completely locked out down below well, the combiner room. This guy, he's hanging, he's hanging from the, I don't know that I would hang from that. So, but I do have a son who hangs from rocks. Especially so. since they didn't, you know, this is, this, these two gentlemen are from ERI, right? But yeah, the antenna yeah. was manufactured by Dielectric. Yeah. Dielectric is a totally different organization that designed and uh, put this antenna back up in yeah. five, 2006, somewhere around there. Yeah. I think Dielectric doesn't have any field service technicians, so yeah. ERI has done all of the inspection, inspection. And, and maintenance, and so they're yeah. looking for cracks, they're looking at all the elbows, the joints. I mean, that's a pretty complex antenna system yes, out there. Yes, it is. Yeah, I assume they're checking tightness of all the bolts and things that put it back together. If the tower, if it was on, what would happen to them? Oh, oh I'd goodness. almost hate to speculate. But, I, I would too. Um, but I, I will say this. So I, I've had guys, when I said, I want to check the three bays or whatever, and the guy goes, oh, I got it. I'll just carry the stick up with me. They, he literally would go up and he would hit it with the tower on to look for arcs. And I didn't have him do that, but I'm saying they said that's what they do if they want to check to see if the bays are working. I think RF safety is coming a long way. I yeah, think uh, a long has. time ago, I've even heard rumor that they used to take like a fluorescent light bulb up yeah. with them. Like let's say you had a, yeah. an eight or 10 bay antenna and you suspect one of them wasn't working. They yeah. take a fluorescent tube with nothing on it and, yeah. and that would be enough energy yeah. to, yep. I wouldn't recommend doing that today. No, today I would I would take the hot dog. I would go the hot dog route. <laughs> the hot dog route? Yeah. The show is beautiful. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate you, man. Another question that people ask whenever they see drone footage of towers and things, like how it, was this legal? Did you did you actually like get permission to do this? Yeah, completely legal. So the drone I have is registered. That's first and foremost. Um, I'm a licensed uh, pilot through the FAA. Um, and that's a course that you can do pretty easily. It's not as complex. So I would definitely recommend that if you're gonna fly a drone more than just as a hobby out on your farm, you have to have a license. Yeah, I think not, that that's not really only important. that, but uh, I had a guy, Mike Petz, and uh, watching your video, I went online and started looking up my understanding of being an amateur. Uh, the drone world, uh, the requirements, and it's like, you know what, the best thing for me to do going forward is to probably take that test, get the drone license, and and not uh, worry about some of the nuances that we have to worry about, you know, what, what rules will come forward. And here you can see that although there's a new housing development underneath the tower, mm -hmm. you know, it's actually sitting in a cemetery. So the risk at the ground level is pretty low. And I think that's mm -hmm. something you really have to consider when you're flying is yeah. not only is what what is the vertical risk, but what is the ground risk, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you're in a heavily populated area, I would say always avoid schools and playgrounds and recreational areas where yeah. if you to lose communication you know even if a, a drone weighs one and a half or two pounds if it falls from the sky yeah what's That's, the velocity factor mm -hmm. and the weight factor of that falling and hitting yep. somebody I, yep. I would be pretty catastrophic so yep. 
what we did here is we talked to the climbers beforehand, right? We mm -hmm. said, hey, we would like to get some video of you while you're up there to showcase the industry, to showcase you. Also, um, the antenna's off at this point in time, so mm -hmm. the RF exposure to the drone, mm -hmm. I was always a little leery about what the effects would be on the communication yeah. that high up and that amount of RF. So so yeah, we had to ask the, the climbers, make mm -hmm. sure that they're okay with it because there is risk there as well. Mm -hmm. And let's say that they were actually in the middle of hoisting things or lifting things on the tower. I think that you could probably still do it, but the risk is higher because they're more distracted and they're trying to do something. Um, you don't want to be distracting to them while they're hoisting. So mm -hmm. this was an inspection. They're just climbing. They're looking visually at the components. And so I think that the overall risk assessment was really low. There's no RF. They're not hoisting and, and, and lifting anything. Uh, the wind was calm. It was a gorgeous day. I mean, it was completely clear. And to get a little bit more detailed about flying next to tower structures. So... If you're, and I could really dive off into a lot of the rules, but that's why you should become uh, licensed. licensed because mm -hmm. you'll learn all this. If you're next to a structure that's registered, you can actually fly the height mm -hmm. of the structure within a 400 foot circumference. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you're in a restricted airspace or not, Right. That's a whole nother thing to dive into. So, yeah, did you file a plan? Did you? Uh... This particular one, we weren't required to because of the airspace. Mm -hmm. um, so no, but. Prior to even considering it, you know, you're looking at the airspace. What are the nearby airports? Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, we potentially, if, if we were in closer proximity to like downtown airport, right, we probably would have had to file a flight plan and yeah. and probably would have been restricted by height. So and you stayed within the property, so the drone falling would have been contained to that property, which only. Yep. You and the climbers were there, right, probably. And they got to see this after the fact, and they were really thankful for it because it showcases just the complexity of what they're doing. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of times they can take a photo from, you know, looking down or looking up or a selfie, but yep. look at you know, a good wide shot of the antenna system. They look so small. Yeah, yeah, they do. And I think a lot of these guys, they work long hours. They travel mm -hmm. away from their family. Yep. Without these individuals, we wouldn't have jobs. Yeah. And if I did that, what would mom say if she saw this video? <laughs> you are never working in that industry again. I'll tell you what, that guy looks like he's tempting fate. Look at that. It's I mean, he's, he's, he's completely hanging on to that one he's panel, like, right? I am. I got my feet to keep me from slamming against the thing, but he is completely... Uh, and you notice they always have that, too. That's the thing when you watch these guys. They have two clips. They're moving around to keep them safe. Yeah, two points of yeah. contact at all times. That's, and, that's uh, required. And so you're just kind of... They're moving around like spiders. And that yet, you know, they're also reclipping and moving clips and stuff like that. So that's Troy Knott. So he's pretty much like ERI's head climber. I mean, mm -hmm. anybody across the country who has a pretty, uh, you know, complex combined antenna system probably mm -hmm. knows Troy. Mm -hmm. uh, Wes, and I can't remember his last name. Awesome. You know, these two guys climb in tandem. And, mm -hmm. you know, American Tower has like over 22 major combined broadcast sites in North America alone. So mm -hmm. they're contracted through them to do proactive preventative maintenance. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to get ahead of anything because as this is up there shifting around and, yeah. and getting beat up by the elements, you know, yeah. things are going to crack. They're going to open up. They're going to loosen up. We look at here. There, there's some uh, uh, cellular, cellular panels. But, but you see, I love your, your angle. So you got the sun right to get a beautiful shot, and you had the most clear day possible probably. This is this awesome video. I should have slowed down a little bit. I don't know what my <laughs> overall goal was here. I, I was ascending quickly, but yeah. um, I figured if we talked about it later on, it would be good just to get up there. Cause yeah. Not only is this, you know, massive antenna at the top, there's all kinds of side mounted antenna yeah, systems like with low power TV. Is that a TV? Is that a TV? Because there's I'm other FM, FM antennas yeah. that are mains other and FM auxiliaries. Antenna there. That's a an ERI antenna there. There's like three or four of those on there. Now there is. Right there. There's also some translators. That's a <laughs> yeah, two bay. Little, that's a single bay translator. Yeah. On the back side, there's yeah. another ERI. So yeah. there's main and auxiliaries. There's the well, 10 stations at the top. Yep. And then there's a side mounted C1. Yep. There's a side mounted uh, C3. Yep. Um, and then a host of auxiliaries, two way stuff. Yep. Um, we had an auxiliary there for one of the stations that were on there. And it's like, well, and the tower going down, that doesn't help you too much. But right. for, for when tower, like the climbers are up there, you're on that, right? So it's it's necessary. It's also interesting that not a lot of it is painted up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if that's um, what that what the reasoning is. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that top portion doesn't have a ton of FAA orange on it. But mm -hmm. uh, it is lit. There's a full incandescent beacon at the top. It's yeah. painted so that aircraft can see it during the day. It's red incandescence at night. But, uh, you know, I, I think something that we've hit on too is uh, 
that towers are expensive to paint, right? So mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of companies are opting to put in a new LED system that's yep. white during the day, yep. white at night, yep. so, re-register the tower, and you know, don't spend one hundred yeah. and fifty thousand dollars. I think paint that's it. a plan for this one mm -hmm. too. They're it gonna is. they're gonna flip a tower pro uh, lighting project on there. And while you were doing this uh, drone footage, and even during the whole procedure, uh, like, do you keep in communication with them while this is going on? Like, do they have radios? Because I can imagine if they dropped a clip or a bolt or you know a phone or something. Well, two things. Uh, I've got a controller, so I'm watching the video screen, but I have to make sure I'm maintaining a clear line of sight, sight for the, you know the yeah. what is it like. 2.4 gig or 5 gig yeah. uh, mm. transmit receive. Mm. I do have a walkie talkie that they provided me. I was letting them know I was coming up because I didn't want them to just be yeah. caught off guard by this whizzing, you know, because they're kind of loud, <laughs> yes, you know, they, they, they make a lot of noise. Yeah. And uh, so I let them know I was coming up, but I was also sitting in my truck, a little bit of protection. And uh, it actually allowed me to recline a little bit and mm -hmm. just kind of visually imagine myself like flying up this <laughs> 1150, it's 1115 feet to the top. So it's, yeah. it's up there. And so you kind of got to remember where you're at geographically in relationship to the tower and where all the mm -hmm. guy wires come in. Yep. I don't know if I told you this or not, my first drone was a GoPro brand mm -hmm. and it didn't have a lot of censoring on it. I don't even know if it had GPS to keep it in place, but yeah. Uh, a gust of wind just like hit me right into a tower like the first time I ever tried to fly it like 100 feet off the air and I had to like try to catch it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I learned a lot. You learn a lot, you know. Yeah, I, I started say as a hobby. There, in the... I saw a video when I first got my drone after I'd been flying it, had a few experiences, and it was like 10 things not to do. And I had already nailed about eight of those. So... <laughs> so. And this is a massive antenna. I mean, it's eight bays. It's uh, three-sided, and I understand it weighs... What, close to 30,000 pounds? Uh, yeah, yeah. Were you, were you there, Jeff, when they actually unloaded that? Off? Yes, yeah, I have a picture of you and I standing there. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty, it was amazing. When you see it on the ground, like you said, people, you get a perspective of that that's just different. And then they're lifting it. And of course, as an engineer, you're like, this could take the whole tower down, right? You're, you're lifting this massively heavy antenna all the way up the side, the pick at the top. The thing, you know, and you've heard of tower issues before where people, you know, they lost it during a heavy lift. Uh, so we were all watching that, uh, every engineer that had a stake at that tower. And by the way, it got a clear bill of health. This antenna looks great. There's very little that's changed since the last inspection. But of course, companies like American Tower are so, looking yeah. at its overall... So see, I was going to say, is that a new subdivision? You know, it is. New houses there. So uh, one of the interesting things about FM is it's up so high that some of those people could have more trouble receiving the station because the, sta the signal was right over the top. So there's a little bit of correction in the antennas to get the signal to go down so you don't lose when you're right in the middle of population. They uh, tweak the antennas to try to get radiation down, but... Well, you see the transmitter buildings directly below it, too. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, even receiving your own signal down there, you would yeah. think next yeah. to a 30, 40 kilowatt transmitter, you wouldn't yeah. have any trouble receiving inside the building. But, I mean, a lot of the stations have external antennas outside the building just to receive what's going on up yeah. top because it's... Right. Yep. And I see a bolt building. They're building some compote up there. No, that's actually part of the cemetery. It's the arc. Which, by the way, if you want to build a tower... Cemeteries are awesome. There is no complaints from neighbors for, you know, if you're sitting out there, <laughs> you've seen that. <laughs> I think the climbers, I, I just realized, like, they climbed the tower and then they did the work. Like, yeah, yeah. if I climbed that tower, I would just go back down. <laughs> I'd be done. Oh, well, that was fun. I mean, think, think about, about the tremendous, tremendous amount of just, you know, physical fitness that you have to be in to uh, uh, ascend a 1,115-foot tower. I mean, yeah. that's, I would, I wouldn't make it. Yeah. But I don't do it every day, and these, I, and these and guys I tell do. You what, it's going straight up. Like every step you take is your full body weight. You don't do that anywhere else, you know, that I know of. Straight Plus, up, it's got to be like at least fifty plus pounds of. Yeah, you know, oh yeah, belt, the gear. Yeah, they're carrying tools, the belts, camera, yeah, walkie-talkie, yep. helmets. I mean, yep. you got to be in good physical shape. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a young guy's game. Not this young guy. Yeah, I'm too afraid of heights. <laughs> well, my wife won't let me, so I'm out too. <laughs> Although I've always wanted to go up into an elevator yeah. on a tower. I, yeah. I really hope the Fox 2 guys will let me go up one day. Yeah, do theirs working? Is there still, Both of them, yeah. Because, you know, the, the thing at Channel 5 and some others, as soon as they get an expensive repair, the insurance costs have gone crazy and yeah. the repair costs are crazy, and they just shut them down. And, they, you know, so that's been disappointing. So We actually put this off several times because of my schedule. You know, there's less and less engineers. His schedule. I his, know, my his schedule. Drone, that is not a good drone day. No, well, it's not, not a good happening drone today. Day. 
<laughs> no, I went out to Cincinnati. We put on some HD gear on a station, and so that that kind of uh, goofed things up. And then we ran into some work that they already had planned. So it was really fortunate that when they arrived, I mean, it was gorgeous. They were actually cool that morning. It was like in the upper 30s, low 40s. Mm -hmm. But by the time they got up there, they were they were warm. It was like yeah. in the in the mid 60s, and so they were yep. like, yeah, we were we were getting pretty hot and sweaty up there, and uh, yeah. But no, this was a beautiful day. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better and, day. And that's a that's a beautiful antenna to to ra FM guys and radio guys. That's a beautiful antenna. So. And so you see all like the the big giant pieces of flexible cable. That yeah, all has yeah. to do with the digital component of yeah. the antenna. Yeah. Um, a lot there's of a the, mixer up there or something that's a, a combiner or something inside of there in there for digital. Yeah, there's a combiner down below, but then there's also a bunch of hybrid pallets hybrid, yeah. Um, yeah. behind each bay, and yeah. then those are the interconnecting bays. Mm -hmm. um, and then you see all the elbows. I mean, this is complex. Um, I had never is. actually seen it up close to this. Tempting fade again. There he goes. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Come on, buddy. I'd never Does seen. Does your wife know what you're doing? <laughs> a lot of these uh, antennas up close, but this is getting what 20 plus years old, and so now American yeah. Towers is looking. Yeah. We've been in conversations with them about, you know, the overall, you know, yep. the, you know, lifespan and yep. uh, what its replacement would look like. Yeah. And so I, I do want to thank Aaron, who is one of the. Uh, younger engineers who's the biggest thing about him i love is that he tries to get it right and, and and even see improvements while he's doing stuff one way it's like if it could be done another you can't pay for that you don't pay people for that they just have it and it's and aaron has it he's also been fortunate to be uh, involved in a lot of projects that a lot of engineers go their whole career without being involved with right you you, you just find right. yourself there he's available and uh, uh, just wonderful. So I, I really appreciate your time. So. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you know all the publicity that you guys give the industry because there's not a lot of content out there that highlights you know tower climbers, engineers, broadcast. There's tons of tech out there, but mm -hmm. I think when people get this kind of stuff, they get really excited, and so we're excited to share that. And uh, I've been fortunate, you know, I've had great mentors. I consider mm -hmm. you a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, guys like Gino Balassi and Sam mm -hmm. Caputa, and, mm -hmm. and we have a great community of, of engineers in St. Louis, Ralph Brancato. I mean, the names go on and on and on, Marshall Rice. And mm -hmm. without that group of people, a young engineer like me, wouldn't be able to be where I'm at today. So yeah, we appreciate great. what you guys provide. And uh, right. if anybody's looking to get into engineering, yeah. Call Joe. <laughs> <laughs>